the lateral varying strengths of the normal soil, 400 pounds per square foot per foot of depth. The cross section of this board that the fellow's going to make, he says he's going to bore it 10 feet, I mean uh, 10 inches in diameter, 10 inches in diameter, which is 0.833 feet. So he has 0.833 square feet per foot of this anchor uh, concrete pouring. <coughs> now, personally, I think the rounding factor of two thirds ought to be applied to that. It is not spelled out in the specifications that way. But the soil is actually a viscous fluid. It would tend to flow around that. I think that it would be right to, uh, to apply that two-thirds rounding factor for a round boring. However, it doesn't say so in the specifications, and I have calculated this as though it was simply the projected area. Don't forget the rounding factor. <coughs> the first foot down, then, would be 400 times 0.833, which is the projected square feet per foot of length of that uh, Port anchor times 3.5. Now the rotation of this is going to be around this uh, toe point right here. It will tend to roll this over this way. And so for the first foot down, the moment arm is three and a half feet. That is from the toe point up to midway on that first foot down on the anchor. 400 times 0.833 times 3.5 gives us 1166 foot pounds of restraint. The next foot down now is at a rate of 800 pounds per square foot. 800 times 0.833 times two and a half, see two and a half feet from here up to the big point of that next one down, gives us 1166. The next one is 1200 pounds per square foot times 1.5 to 1,500 pounds of restraint, and the next is 1,600 times 833 <coughs> times 0.5, which is half a gives 666. This gives us a total moment of restraint of 4,998 foot pounds. Now we can calculate the safety factor of this thing. The safety factor will be our 4,998 available restraint of, of the uh, anchor divided by the actual force that's going to be applied to it, the actual moment of 3,008. <coughs> so we have a safety factor of 1.66 on that anchor. This is the way you can determine the safety factor. You know how safe the thing is under that condition. And that's pretty important to uh, be able to tell what that is. Next, we need to find out how much of a restraint we have against that uplift business. We have that 547 pounds pulling upward. The total volume of the anchor, we calculate its cross section pi times point. 417 squared by r squared, remember that old formula, gives us five times four feet, and is four feet feet. Gives us a total volume of 2.18 cubic feet. The weight of the anchor is 2.18 cubic feet times 150 concrete weighs nominally 150 pounds per cubic foot. So the weight of the anchor is 327 pounds. You can see if, uh, if that's all it were, um, it would not be safe. That is, uh, 
with a 527 pound up there. And the weight of the anchor is 327 pounds. You need to pull the thing out of the ground if it were slippery, if it were in mud or uh, saturated soil. However, this fellow uh, went ahead to calculate another restraint that we have. Again, according to the EIA specification, we are allowed to calculate a surface friction in a normal soil of 200 pounds per square foot per foot of depth. See, at greater depths, you have more pressure around it from the soil, and so it grips it more tightly. The surface area of this thing is 5 times 0.833, or 2.6 square feet per foot of depth. So we make the calculation again. 200 times the 2.6, 520 pounds in, for the first foot down, of surface friction restraining the gas up there. The next one, 400 times 2.6, third one, 600 times 2.6, the next one, 800 times 2.6. So we have 5,200 pounds of restraint from the surface friction plus the 327 uh, pounds from the weight of the anchor, and so we have a restraint that gets up to that field of 5,527 pounds, which is about a 10 to 1 safety factor on that, provided that the soil is still as, uh, uh, as normal as we say. Well, uh, let's go ahead. fellow wants to know about the strength of that anchor post that he is uh, putting in there. He has decided that he's going to put in an anchor post, which is a uh, three-inch pipe, that is three-inch nominal water pipe, which is three inches inside diameter, and with a three-sixteenths wall thickness, it uh, makes the outside uh, three and three-eighths inches in diameter. Now for every structural section that is used, the mechanical engineering design books will give you calculations or formulas for calculating what is called the section modulus of that section. The section modulus of this, and here's a cross section of this piece of pipe with the outside diameter called D and the inside diameter of D1. The section modulus of that is given by this little formula. Pi times D to the fourth power minus D1 to the fourth power over 32D. Well, when you work out this pi over 32, it's 0.09715. So it's the diameter, the outside diameter of the fourth power minus the inside diameter of the fourth power divided by the outside diameter. <clears throat> the maximum stress that you will have in that pipe will be given by the moment applied to it divided by the section modulus. And that's why we calculate the section modulus. That's the maximum stress. That will be what's called the stress at the extreme fiber, that is the farthest out place. And of course, if you have the thing standing up here with, uh, uh, with the dial cable tending to pull it over this way, the maximum stress will be right along here on the outside of the pipe, right after it's buried in the concrete. That's where it'll break. You, you can tell that if you do it. But you like to know how much that is for a pipe of that given size. So taking this three-inch ID pipe with a three-sixteenths wall thickness, we calculate, again, using a little hand calculator or a computer or whatever, that the section modulus is this 0 0.098715 times 3.375 to the fourth power minus 3 to the fourth power over 3.375, and it's a number of 1.418. That uh, happens to be in units of inches to the third power. So that was, and we'll keep the dimensions right. Now, 
the moment that we have on there is 3,007.5 foot pounds. Remember, we calculated that before from the uh, tension of the guy cable on the top of that five foot post. 3,007 and a half foot pounds. Since we've got this in inch dimensions, we've got to convert the moment over into inch dimensions. So it is uh, 36,090, so you have to multiply by 12, convert it over to inch pounds. 36,090 inch pounds. The maximum stress on our steel pipe will be 36,090 divided by the section modulus of 1.418 giving us 25,451 pounds per square inch will be the tensile stress on our steel pipe at that, at that point. That will be at the worst condition out here on the outer edge of the pipe, right where it moves the concrete foundation. Now, normally, on structural steel, we design for a maximum of 20,000 pounds per square inch of tensile stress. This gives us actually a two and a half to one safety factor on it because the actual breaking strength of normal structural steel is about 50,000 pounds per square inch. However, the uh, uh, standards that the American Institute for Steel Construction hold that if the stresses are primarily from wind loading. You may increase the design strength of your steel by one third. This means that instead of designing for a maximum of 20,000 pounds per square inch, where the guy cable is primarily subject to wind loading for its maximum stress, you may assume 26,600 pounds per square inch of maximum stress on uh, this structural steel and the system of that pipe will meet those requirements. So we are, in this case, <coughs> within that amount. This comes out 25,451 versus the maximum allowable 26,600. So we're safe on that piece of pipe that he may use a uh, three-inch nominal water pipe for his, his uh, uh, guy anchor post. But that is the smallest that he could get away with. If he tries to go down to two and a half inch pipe, it would be overstressed under those conditions and uh, uh, presumably unsafe. That the, that the guy anchor toward the back of his lot is going to be down by that creek and down in some uh, muddy soil that may be subject to inundation when the creek rises. So he gets a little worried about that after doing his uh, calculations, uh, depending so much on soil friction for the uplift restraint. So he, at this time, had an offer of four sections of uh, a Ron 55G. Some fellow would sell it to him fairly cheap, and he decides he would like to go to a freestanding, self-supporting tower, and so he'd like to run a calculation on that. On 55G, the projected area uh, of the face of that is 0.3433 square feet per feet per foot. So the wind force comes out 10 pounds per foot. The total distributed forces then of 10 of uh, 12 pounds per foot. The moment from the distributed forces, 9,600 foot pounds. From the antenna is 9,648 foot pounds, giving them a total base moment of 19,248 foot pounds. The safe moment of restraint for the 55G uh, tower sections is 17,160. So it, uh, the calculated figures there for 